Hi, it's Tim from oraclebase.com. In this video we'll discuss how to build a two node rack setup using Vagrant. The build is made up of three virtual machines. There's a DNS server and two rack nodes. This build takes a lot of memory, so you'll need at least 16 gig of RAM on your PC or laptop for it to work, and I would avoid running any other software while you're running the build. Each of the virtual machines are based on an Oracle Linux 8 Vagrant box. For Oracle 19C Rack to work on Oracle Linux 8, you'll need access to the patches from My Oracle Support. If you don't have access to the patches, use the Oracle Linux 7 build. The build is very similar, but it will work with the 19.3 base release of Oracle Grid Infrastructure and Database. The Vagrant repositories and articles describing the builds are linked in the description box. I've tested these builds on Windows 10, Mac OS and Linux hosts. We'll assume you have VirtualBox and Vagrant installed on your machine, you've cloned or copied the build repository to your machine, and you've downloaded the grid infrastructure and database software along with the patches. Let's start by doing a quick walkthrough of the repository. We can see there are a few directories that make up the build. We'll start with the config directory. We can see there are two files. The Vagrant YAML file holds all the parameters used to define the virtual machines. This includes the machine names, IP addresses and resource limits. The install-m file holds the environment variables used to complete the builds inside the virtual machines. If you need to make configuration changes, it will typically be in one of these two files. Next we look at the shared scripts directory. All the configuration scripts used by multiple virtual machines are kept here. If you want to understand how to perform one specific action, check out the contents of the related script. Next we look at the software directory. This is where we'll put all the grid infrastructure and database software. If you're doing the Oracle Linux 8 build, you'll also need to put the OPatch and GI bundle patch here. In this build we'll be using the July 2020 bundle patch, leaving us with Oracle 19.8. If you're using a different patch version, you'll need to alter the config files to reference the correct patch name. Next we look at the DNS directory. There's a Vagrant file to build the DNS server, and a scripts directory for custom scripts. Inside the scripts directory we have a setup script. That just runs the root setup script as the root user. The root setup script calls all necessary shared scripts and performs any custom actions to complete the DNS build. Next we look at the node2 directory. There's a vagrant file to build the node2 server and a scripts directory for custom scripts. It's the same idea as the DNS server, but we see an additional Node2 specific script. As before, the root setup script calls all the shared and custom scripts to complete the Node2 build. Next we look at the Node1 directory. There's a vagrant file to build the Node1 server and a scripts directory for custom scripts. This is similar to the Node2 server, but we see a lot more scripts. Node1 is responsible for performing the grid infrastructure software installation, configuration, database software installation, and database creation. As before, the root setup script calls all the shared and custom scripts to complete the Node1 build. 
Finally, we take a look at the README file. This gives top level instructions on how to use the build. We see the required software, memory settings, what the file system should look like once the software is in position. How to build the rack. Turn it off. And destroy it. So let's create a rack. We switch to the software directory on my PC. And we can see the software has been put in place. We have the grid infrastructure software, database software, latest O patch software, and the grid infrastructure bundle patch. We switch to the base directory for the DNS server. We issue the vagrant up command and wait for the DNS server to be built. It's a very small and simple server, so it should build really quickly. Once this is complete, we move on to the Node 2 server. The Node 2 server must be built before the Node 1 server. We switch to the base directory for the Node 2 server. We issue the vagrant up command and wait for the Node 2 server to be built. The preboot customizations can take some time as they're building the shared disks, which will be used by ASM on both nodes. It then performs the installation prerequisites and Node 2 is complete. There's no Oracle software installed on Node 2 at this point. We switch to the base directory for the Node 1 server. We issue the vagrant up command and wait for the Node 1 server to be built. The preboot VM customizations are quick this time as all the shared disks have already been provisioned. Once the prerequisites are complete, the main part of the installation begins. This pre patches the grid infrastructure home installs and configures the grid infrastructure software, pre-patches the database home, installs the database software and creates a rack database. Depending on your host machine this can take a long time. The Oracle Linux 7 version of the build is a lot quicker because you don't have to do any patching. Once the installation is complete the build script checks the status of the cluster we can see both nodes are running in the output of the server CTL command and the output of the v$activeinstances view. We could have defined all three virtual machines using a single vagrant file, but I prefer to keep them separate. You now have a two node rack to play with. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.